How sure are you that your 3D printer has thermal runaway protection enabled? In this video, we're gonna go through Marlin's safety features so you can make sure you don't end up like this. I see a lot of threads on social media by new users asking, should I update my firmware? And the answer is an emphatic yes. Unfortunately, there's a lot of misinformation about this and a lot of people think they have thermal runaway protection enabled when they in fact don't. I've seen one particular individual go around bashing anyone who disagreed with them because they shouldn't trust what some YouTuber says instead of what they see in front of their face. Unfortunately, that person was just plain wrong. So I'm gonna use this opportunity to go through all of the safety features in Marlin, including thermal runaway protection, showing you what happens if you do or don't have it enabled, as well as how to fix it. Now I see this as an extremely important safety video about 3D printing. If you think it has any safety merit at all, please share it with as many people as you know that 3D print so we can set the record straight and get people printing as safely as possible. Let's start by running you through my test rig. My testing setup is as follows. I have a large natural sandstone safety rock in my backyard and of course I have a fire extinguisher on hand. Printer-wise, the heart of my old solid little 2 is my Ramps 1.4 and RepRap LCD. It's 12 volts and running an early genuine E3D V6 hot end. On that board is an ancient version of Marlin from 2013. Therefore, I took my Marlin 119 Ender 3 firmware. This of course has thermal runaway protection enabled, so all I did was change it to suit ramps and the different LCD screen. We start by accessing the LCD screen and bringing it up to PLA temperatures, in this case 185. In no time at all it reaches that, and that's because everything's working as it should be. The main board outputs via a MOSFET to the heater cartridge and the thermistor goes back to the main board and plugs in to report back on temperature. We're going to start by looking at an error that should be caught and corrected by hardware instead of firmware. In this scenario, we have a break in our heater cartridge wires leading to a short. Many main boards come with a fuse, whether it's polyfuse or blade fuse like shown here. That's going to pop and prevent any type of disaster from occurring. Some of the misinformation I've seen out there is people mistaking the min and max temp triggers as thermal runaway protection. So let's start by going through exactly what they are and the types of ways that they can be triggered. Now we get into our errors that are going to need the firmware to help protect you and your printer. Let's say that we had a break in the thermistor wire, essentially it's now wired open. On my testing rig I can easily simulate this by simply unplugging the thermistor. Because we have a target temperature for the hot end, we can see that it instantly triggers the min temp error and stops all of the heating. If we are to reset it, you can see it's at minus 14, but as soon as we request temperature again, it instantly triggers with the same error. An open thermistor circuit will normally trigger a very low number, and if it's below our heater minimum temp, it's going to trigger that error. To trigger our next error, we're going to look at shorting the thermistor wires. Imagine that you screwed them in too tight and the screw cut into them. Essentially, the two wires for the thermistor out of the main board are forming a closed circuit. Again, we can simulate this quite easily. We're going to unplug our bed thermistor because it works the same for the hot end and the bed. Then I'm gonna put a jumper in place to short the two wires together. You can see that the temperature jumps up over 100 and then higher still to trigger the max temp for the bed. Unlike the min temp, as soon as we reset the printer, the error is triggered. It doesn't matter if you're trying to heat or not. Once again, in the firmware, we have our max temp and this should be set somewhere around the maximum that you can safely heat it to without the hot end degrading. As soon as it goes above this, the error is triggered and the printer shuts down. Can I please stress that protection for min and max temp is not thermal runaway protection. That was available a long time ago, including in my five-year-old build of Marlin and my Solid Doodle 2. Thermal runaway protection is something altogether different, so let's have a look at how it works. The situation that's needed to trigger thermal runaway is a separation of either the heater cartridge or in this case, the thermistor. Think about it, the heater is heating up but the thermistor can't read it because they're in two separate places. The firmware is gonna keep that heater circuit on waiting for the temperature to rise. The most common way this happens is the hot end cartridge falling out and here are some pictures of a house fire that occurred from just that. You can read about it in configuration in advance but basically thermal runaway protection is inbuilt to catch this exact situation. Now, Creality aren't the only ones guilty of this, but if you check the code on their Creality GitHub, as well as that available directly from their firmware download page on their website, searching for the word runaway in the appropriate section of the files yields zero results. And that's because the version of Marlin they've based it on is from 2015. This is what it should look like. In later versions of Marlin, if you search for runaway in configuration.h, you'll find two lines for the hot end and the bed that need to be uncommented. 
So that's the theory behind Thermal Runaway Covered. Let's look at the practical side. The firmware that I put onto this testing rig is meant to have it enabled. So let's find out if it works as it should. We're gonna start with the hot and cold and no temperature requested. And we're going to remove the thermistor from the heater block. So now it's just measuring ambient temperature instead of the actual temperature of the hot end and the nozzle. We're once again gonna to go to the LCD menu and ask for the PLA temperatures of the hot end and it's gonna try and heat up. It doesn't take long until the error is triggered. Despite trying to heat, it remains at 21 degrees. Thermal runaway protection has two things it checks for and this is the first one. The second one can be found by already having your printer up to temperature and then once again removing your thermistor or your hot end heater. Outside and with the breeze, it takes less than a minute for the uncovered thermistor to come down to ambient and then all of a sudden the error is triggered. As you can see, thermal runaway protection is working perfectly. So one thing that previous individual I've mentioned was doing was quoting the firmware, pointing to the heating sanity check. Foolishly, when they were quoting it, they didn't quote the part where it was commented out and therefore not in effect as I had thought. Nonetheless, we'll put it through its paces by flashing it onto my testing rig and seeing what happens with the exact same tests. I flashed my setup with the Ender 3 firmware straight off their website and we're gonna start by separating the thermistor with a cold hot end. After approximately three minutes, it really stinks and it starts smoking, but nothing happens beyond that, which is really good news. It's pretty windy, so I consider covering the whole setup to keep the wind out. Here's what it looks like afterwards, and I rerun the test. Once again, it stinks and there's some smoke from time to time, but after sitting for 10 minutes, it's stable and nothing catches a light. When I pull the heater cartridge, you can see that it's genuine E3D, and I put the lack of failure down to the high quality aluminium used in the heater block. I also think the relatively low powered 30 watt cartridge is to blame, so I substitute in a 40 watt cartridge. Once again, after 10 minutes, no result. Now don't be fooled into thinking that situation isn't in fact dangerous. It definitely is. I was using E3D hardware, which is widely accepted as some of the highest quality around. YouTube user Chris Bates made a video with another type of aluminium block where the heater cartridge got hot enough to melt through and then set the rest of the printer on fire. We've looked at what happens when the thermistor gets separated, but it seems more common that the heater cartridge does fall out. So let's see what happens in that event. We've covered thermistor separation, but what about if the heater cartridge falls out? Well, it only took a couple of minutes before my one was glowing red hot. On top of my BuildTech covered aluminium plate, no damage was done, but this is unrealistic because you're gonna be printing something. The second that red hot heater cartridge touches what you're printing, it's gonna go up in flames as you can see here. The wind at this point isn't really a factor, so I remove the acrylic cover so you can see exactly what's going on. The flames from the printed part quickly engulf the cooling fan and the printed shroud that goes around that. As the heat travels up, any printed or timber parts you have above are gonna melt down and add more fuel to the fire. One of the worst things about this fire was the disgusting smoke that poured out the entire time despite having a relatively small flame. For this simple testing rig, there's a distinct lack of plastic parts to continue the fire going. It's just lucky that it never engulfed the timber platform that holds up the heated bed. So we finally have our fire and that proves that the firmware, at least as it is on the Creality website, is definitely not safe and does not contain thermal runaway protection. As I said in the clip, this wasn't a full 3D printer, so it ran out of fuel and went out by itself after about five minutes. The smoke, however, left a lot of damage on the inside of the acrylic case, consistent with what you see in these pictures of house fires started by failing 3D printers from this exact problem. Now there's no doubt the firmware as supplied by Creality on their two separate pages doesn't have thermal runaway protection and is definitely dangerous. So the question begs, what's the way that you can test this at home without the risk of starting a fire? Here's how to do it. You're gonna start by bringing your hot end up to temp and then you have two methods. The first I find unreliable. With a hairdryer on maximum fan and set to cool, it's meant to be able to cool everything down to the point where thermal runaway kicks in. But I found in my testing that it quickly recovered in a minute or so and it was never triggered despite being present in the firmware. Instead, what I would recommend is locating and loosening one of the red wires that goes to the heater cartridge. Therefore, nothing can actually heat up. The printer should detect that there's a big difference between its target and its actual temperature, and that should trigger the thermal runaway in less than a minute. If you pass more than a minute with this test and you don't have an error in LCD, your firmware does not have thermal runaway protection enabled and you should definitely do something about it. Now, there is one more safety check specific to the CR10 and Ender 3 that I think you should consider. Viewer Brendan Watt sent me an email alerting me to a problem with how the heat sinks were mounted on the MOSFETs. If you clear the wiring on your main board, you should see one large heat sink. The trouble is when you peel it off, you'll most likely find that the thermal compound is not actually touching the third of the three MOSFETs, meaning it's not getting any cooling and it has a higher chance of failing. 
I would highly recommend pulling it off, cleaning it and reattaching it with some thermal compound, maybe even an extra heat sink to make sure all three of those MOSFETs are being cooled properly. In Brendan's case, this contributed to the MOSFET for the heated bed failing, meaning as soon as he turned on the printer, power went to the heated bed and it skyrocketed regardless of what he did on the control panel. Safety first, what should you be doing to avoid your 3D printer from potentially burning your house down? Number one, you should definitely upgrade your firmware. It doesn't matter if it's vanilla Marlin or TH3D unified firmware, all of them are gonna have thermal runaway protection enabled. Linked above is my guide for burning a bootloader on an Ender 3, so you can do just that. The other thing you should do as part of your maintenance is to check and tighten the fixtures for your hot end for the heater cartridge and for Mister to prevent either of them from separating in the first place. Finally, it would seem pretty foolish not to install a smoke detector and fire extinguisher in the area where you store your 3D printers. Now, ideally you would never run your 3D printer unattended, but realistically people run prints that run for days and that's just not feasible. It's up to each individual to decide whether the risk is worth the reward. This brings us to the end of this video. Please comment below. Have you upgraded your firmware? Have you tested for thermal runaway protection? Perhaps you were one of the ones in the camp that thought it was enabled when it was in fact not. Thank you so much for watching. As I said earlier, please share it with anyone you think it can help. And until next time, happy and safe 3D printing. G'day, it's Michael again. If you like the video, then please click like. If you want to see more content like this in future, click subscribe and make sure you click on the bell to receive every notification. If you really want to support the channel and see exclusive content, become a patron. Visit my Patreon page. See you next time.